It is changing, but until there's a unified voice where doctors are saying, yes, diet's important, here's the foods that are good for you, here's the foods that are not good for you, then it's harder for people to really latch onto because emotionally they don't want to. Emotionally, they'd rather not believe it. This is Ravi Jandiala, and I'm joined by my spouse and colleague, Malika Alu, in welcoming our special guest, Dr. Brooke Goldner. This is something I found very peculiar, something related to the human emotions, and probably you can help me explain what is happening here. Just like uh, a moon has two sides to it, most autoimmune sufferers also have two sides. On one side, they know to get healthy, they must stop consuming these processed foods and change their lifestyle. And yet on the other side, they feel comfortable staying where they are and reaffirm their stance by thinking of things like, hey, my doctor told me diet has no role to play. There is no known cause of the disease. So why even try changing? Mm -hmm. So why is it, why is this happening within them? And in this struggle, what I see is a lot of people do not take that step forward. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this? Yeah, so what you're talking about is ambivalence. So ambivalence, people think ambivalence means not caring. It's not true. Ambivalence is when you're being told or drawn to opposite things at the same time. And that usually causes paralysis, right? So if someone says, so if I say that eliminating meat and dairy and processed foods from your diet can eliminate your disease, and if you eat these foods, you can get better. And that sounds good. But then your doctor says, and you love and know your doctor very well, says, food doesn't matter, take these pills. I guess I'll just won't do anything, right? Because why change my diet if I can enjoy my food and just take the medicine and won't work? So there's kind of this, you don't know what to do or what to believe, so you just kind of don't do anything, right? So one of the problems is the fact that modern medicine is behind. It won't stay that way. You know, I went to teach at a medical school in Detroit, Wayne Medical School. And at the medical school, the students created a group, the medical students created a group of wanting to understand plant-based nutrition and diet and medicine. And they've been bringing in doctors from all over the country to teach. So I was in Detroit teaching at an event and I went there and I taught these students. And it's a group of maybe 50 students, right? Out of the 200 that's in the class, but 50 doctors, future doctors, you know? So things are changing. And actually what these medical students did is they compiled all of the existing research that exists in disease and nutrition and turned it into a chapter to be taught at their school. They took that initiative. So it is changing, but until there's a unified voice where doctors are saying, yes, diet's important. Here's the foods that are good for you. Here's the foods that are not good for you then it's harder for people to really latch on to because emotionally they don't want to. Emotionally, they'd rather not believe it. So why, why not just believe the person who suits you better, right? You know, it's just like, you know, it took decades for the FDA to come out against cigarettes after we knew that it was causing cancer. Research was showing it was causing cancer and other lung diseases, but the doctors were still smoking. The FDA didn't say a word for decades. Right. And only after the FDA came out with it, did doctors start finally saying you shouldn't smoke. That's what's happening right now with meat, dairy, processed foods. Right. The World Health Organization, which has the consensus of medical research and agreement in the scientific community, says that meat is cancer causing. Why isn't it being taught in medical school as cancer causing? Why? It's, it's, it's consensus of medical research has proven this to be true. But it's not taught yet. So, you know, that's going to take time.